So it's been about two weeks since I went on that test drive and I finally have the car back up in the air. I'm going to start working on it again. But I've been looking around at the front suspension trying to find the source of that clunk. And I did find that the sway bar end link was a little bit rounded but it was pretty much tightened at the max that it could go before the nuts started rounding. So I threaded a new nut onto the bolt because the bolt was fine. But I think I found the source of the clunk. And I was right, it was coming from the front left. And if you look down right there, you can see that the coil is sort of rubbing on the inside of the lower control arm over here. Just the way that it's seated is a little bit strange. So what I'm going to do is break the lower ball joint loose. Um, I guess pull the end link off and all that crap. And then I'm going to try to rotate the spring and seat it again. So hopefully I won't have any sort of rubbing issue. As far as I can tell, the other side looks good. I'm also going to go around and uh, make sure all the suspension bolts throughout the rear and the front are tight. Um, the other thing I had to do is adjust the toe. Because when I put the springs on this car, the toe shifted slightly. Aside from that, got a little bit of work with the brakes to do. I saw that a little bit of fluid was seeping out of this front line over here. This guy, which actually goes to the rear brakes, it's that one central line. So I was getting a little bit of seep out of here. All I really did was tighten it up a little bit and I'm going to bleed the brakes again. Hopefully it's not going to seep anymore, but if it does, I'm going to have to flare a new line and you know bend everything and make a new line for that, which sucks. Alright, so it was actually worse than I thought. I noticed that the spring wasn't sitting properly in the top perch. The, uh, the top spring cup that's in the frame and one of the tabs was bent where it sits. But uh, I straightened those tabs out, got the spring in, everything's seated properly now. I think maybe I just rushed the assembly before because I was in such a hurry to drive this thing. But uh, as far as I can tell right now, everything looks like it's seated properly. All the ball joints are torqued, and um, I got the sway bar end link fully tightened up now. Um, I also pulled one valve cover so far, kind of just to take a look. Just by looking at all the rocker bodies and uh, the inside of the covers, doesn't look like I have any clearance issues. As far as I can tell too, it looks like my water pump is weeping out of the little weep hole that Mazir puts on them. You can see there's one on the very top right there, but there's also another on the bottom. And, um, yeah, that's not a good sign because this was a brand new water pump. Although it had been sitting on a shelf for a long, long time. I'm going to call Mazir tomorrow and I'm going to see if they can do anything for me. Maybe send me another seal or maybe I can ship it back to them and I don't know. <laughs> maybe they'll be able to uh, put a new seal in it and it won't cost a whole lot. I mean, if, if it costs more than 120 bucks, then I'm pretty much in it for more than the cost of a brand new one without a leaky seal. Alright, so I called Mazir yesterday and they told me to run the pump for at least another 30 minutes. And if that doesn't stop the leak, then I can actually send it back to them and have them replace the seal. Uh, the reason they said that is because the seal, apparently, the one behind the impeller is ceramic material. So they say sometimes after they sit for a long time, they get scratched up. But if you run them for a good bit, you can actually clear out that scratch or any sort of grit that's stuck in there. And it'll seal up just fine beyond that. So I'm going to go take the car for a test drive soon. I'm just letting the RTV cure on the water pump but um after that I'll just fill it with coolant and drop the car back on the ground and hopefully hopefully it won't weep beyond that if it does then I get to bring the car back in here pull the water pump off drain the coolant again and uh, throw it in a box and ship it off to California I took the car out on a pretty long test drive today. I racked up about 50 miles total, maybe a little more than that, just basically to uh, see if the Mazir would stop leaking. I don't think it has. 
Um, it's definitely leaking less than it did, but I still see a few droplets coming out of the bottom of it. So maybe they were just residual, just hanging out there. So I wiped it down and I'm going to see if they come back. Um, I also got some good data logs. And I know that the timing is pretty soft. Idle isn't as strong as it should be, but overall I think it's been running pretty good. Nothing like totally out of the ordinary. I also put some fresh 93 gas in it because it still had some 89 that's been in the tank for uh, since not last Thanksgiving, but the one before that. Um, everything seems pretty good. I don't think the brakes softened up or anything. Um, the only thing that is a little weird is there's a clunk coming from, I'm guessing, the front suspension, but it only really happens when I'm turning, so maybe one of the ball joints isn't fully seated, or one's bad, potentially, which I would hope it isn't, considering that they're brand new, but, um, well, I wouldn't say brand new, but they're still relatively new. Um, other than that, it could be body bushings, maybe, or lower control arms, or who knows. There's so much that it could be, so I'm going to get the car back up in the air again. Take a look. So I boxed up my Mazir and I sent it off, and uh, a few days ago they gave me a call, and they told me that the minimum was going to be to fix it would be 100 bucks for a new bearing and seal, and the turnaround time is probably going to be... I don't know, uh, late this coming week. Right now it's Saturday, so they said they would probably have it done by like Thursday or Friday, which means that I'm I'm definitely not going to have it next weekend, unfortunately. But uh, I guess I'll, I'll get to put it back on, not next weekend, but the one after that. But um, for the time being, pretty much all I'm going to do is do some interior and exterior work. I have... Uh, some door panel pieces. This is what I managed to scavenge for this driver's side ruby red door panel. I got a bunch of pieces. Um, there's another panel in the back that it looks like is, you know, it has some good parts on it, but I can see somebody, there's a screw hole through it. Somebody screwed it in to the car that it came off of. Um, also got my shift boot. I believe the trim ring, yeah, it's right here. The trim ring for it. Uh, that's not the top piece, that's just the rubber. But, uh, yeah. I gotta find the metal for the rest of the shift boot, and uh, I'll put that together. But all I'm really gonna do is focus on restoring the inside a little bit, because a lot of these door panels are coming apart from people. What, what people do is they see the ashtray open, and they grab on this thinking it's a grab handle, and they just rip my door panels off, unfortunately. So... You're supposed to grab up here. Nobody does it. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go through, try to get everything fastened pretty well. So hopefully when I go up from bumps and I'm riding around, this thing's not squeaking like it normally does. Alright, so door panel's on, switches are in, and everything seems to be working well. Everything's plugged in, looks a lot more professional than it did. This rear window right here, the one right behind the driver's door, the uh, driver's side rear. I guess um, the previous owner of this car decided to like shove a bunch of napkins and stuff in the top corner over here, and it was blocked upward, but... um. Now this window goes down, thankfully. So I took the door panel off, and I had to pull out all the glides for the uh, the window motor. The window motor was fine. I could hear it moving around in there, but all these little glides, these rectangular pieces, they split in two. And those are what help it glide on the track. But um, pulled all those out. I had to drill out a rivet and um, replace that with a bolt just for the track on the window. The, uh, the other lower track I was able to take out and just kind of bend the tabs to, to get rid of those old rectangular slides. And then I put in new ones, which are circular. I know um, Dorman makes some. GM has like a replacement for these rectangular pieces. They're circular and they're just made of nylon. All you really got to do is just pop them over the window motor. 
But um, yeah, window switch works and everything, and this this window rolls down now, which is crazy. It's nuts. It goes all the way up and down. Next thing I'm gonna move on to after I do that shift boot is I want to do some exterior work. So the previous owner of this car screwed this trim piece into here. So I got another trim piece from the junkyard. Um, I'm probably gonna like ball up some JB Weld and kind of stick it in the holes because, like, come on, man, they drilled right into the body. So it's been about two weeks since I last worked on this car. I've just been waiting for my water pump to come back from Azir. So I've kind of held off on, on doing a whole lot. After UPS swings by and drops the water pump off, all I gotta do is uh, scrape a little RTV off, which I'm gonna do in a minute. Put a, a new glob of it around the edge on, and then um, just torque it up, fill it with coolant, bleed the system, and then I'm pretty much ready to drop the car on the ground. Take it on test drive number three. The other thing that I did do, that I don't think I got on camera before, is um, I found the source of the clunk on the front right. I know in the first test drive, the front left was clunking pretty badly because the front left spring was like way, way out in how it was seated. Well, I found out that the front right wasn't really seated well either, and it was kind of rubbing against the, um, the spring pocket. I don't know if you can really see it, but there's this little lip back here kind of that runs along the back edge and it looked like how it was seated in the uh, in the lower down here the lower control arm the spring was sort of cocked in a way where it was rubbing against that so I I just kinda dropped the lower ball lower ball joint lower control arm um, push that down and rotated it and uh, what they tell you to do is try to get the very bottom of the spring like where the spring ends on the bottom towards where these two drain holes are right here and I actually I wasn't able to get it because of the length of the spring but I think the end is kinda like right here just rotated a little bit everything's back together got the shock in and um, beyond that I also got the shift boot installed no longer have a hole in my floor and um, also did a little bit of weight reduction <laughs> trunk is completely empty I reattached all these the fake wood pieces and fixed the switch. Um, I had to go to the junkyard and get more ashtray covers because those are all destroyed. And I guess a new one of these bezels because that popped off when I pulled the speaker out. The concert sound speaker, it, it was blown out anyway. It never worked. But, um, but yeah, interior is looking a whole lot better. All they really got to do is put that wide band in and uh, give it a good clean up with the vacuum. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but I also completely reworked the tune and I'm gonna reflash this car in a little bit. Um, I think I got an earlier video where I showed that this trim piece was screwed in, but uh, I plugged those holes and I got the new piece on. Um, I also found that the other side was also half coming off and somebody had glued it back on. So, I replaced this guy, too. Alright, so I'm out on test drive number three, and uh, so far everything looks good. Car's fully warmed up, I'm getting ready to go for a drive. You can't really see, but uh, oil pressure looks fine too. Temp's hovering at 180. I've just kind of been sitting here. I think one of the fans, is it on? Nah, none of the, none of the fans are on. I'm just idling. Um, everything looks good though. I can't really drive and film at the same time, so if I break down, Next, you'll see a clip of me on the side of the road, but if you don't see that, assume that everything went well. Um, I haven't left the neighborhood yet, but so far everything looks good. Just hanging out at a stoplight.
So the test drive last night was a success, and the car definitely drives a whole lot better than it used to. It actually handles pretty well, too. I was throwing it into some corners, and the thing really sticks. Although, um, I still have to address the steering before I go and I do anything too extreme with it. But it did seem to hold the road a whole lot better than it used to. Um, there are some new problems that have cropped up, or maybe I've, I've just realized now. And... Um, some of them really aren't that bad. Like, for example, it looks like the crank hub, the seal that goes into the timing cover, is um, leaking a little bit of oil. And that's because this crank hub isn't actually off of this motor. It's It came off my friend's parts engine. And um, there was a little bit of a groove in the crank hub where the boss for the seal is. Hopefully, I can source another one of those that has no grooves in it and no oil will pass through the front there. It's not a whole lot, it's just a very tiny, tiny leak. I do think I have an exhaust leak, so I'm going to swap out these header gaskets. And then um, the new thing that sort of cropped up, which I'm really not happy about, is that I'm getting a bit of a clunk from the upper ball joints on both, both driver and passenger sides. I can probably replicate it for you. That's the one on the driver's side, and there is another on the passenger side. Although, this, this side I pumped with grease, so it's a little quieter. You can still hear it a little bit. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty certain these 700 pounds per inch springs pretty much destroyed my upper ball joints, which really sucks because they're only a year old. Not even. They barely have any drive time on them. I mean... I swapped them when I put the Voglins in, and I didn't even have the Voglins in for that long. I don't know. They're probably the cheapest crap that comes from Rock Auto. I don't know what they are. Alright, so one of the sounds was definitely the brake pad kind of shifting back and forth, but the more metallic, clunky sound that I was hearing definitely has to be this guy, this upper ball joint. And I can tell that because when I pump it up with the jack just a little bit, I'm gonna take the pry bar, put it under the arm. You can hear it clunk up. So there's definitely some play going on in there. New ball joints are in on both sides. I'm using these Moves K5208s. Um, Pretty expensive at the parts store. If you get them through Rock Auto, they're a shitload cheaper. Thankfully, my local advance price matched what I would normally pay at Rock Auto. So I was able to get these same day, which is kind of nice. So check it out. Silence. Nothing. took the car for a drive after doing both the upper ball joints. Like I said earlier, I replaced them both with the heavy duty Moogs. And um, the clicking was gone when I was bouncing the car up and up and down after I put the car back on the ground. But I was still getting a clunk from the front left wheel, which um, led me to believe that it was probably something in the lower control arm. And uh, I was able to actually replicate it. I had my dad come out and push up and down on the car. And I sort of pinpointed it to one of the bushings in the lower control arm or um, something scraping over the control arm itself. I even, I took the shock out just to try to listen for it and that didn't change anything, so it definitely wasn't the shock. But um, I have that front left suspension apart again and um, I got the lower right here. I've already pressed new lower bushings into it and uh, the ball joint is the same one, which feels fine. I just pumped new grease into it, had to put a new seal on it. Pretty certain I found the cause of it and it would be this guy right here. I believe it is the farther forward control arm bushing and it looks like the one sleeve on the inside has sort of loosened itself which is kind of odd that these are made this way but I'm pretty certain that was the source of the noise you can hear it when I shake it so hopefully these new Mevotech bushings take care of it when I put it all back together and I don't have to actually drop the suspension again because this is this is getting pretty old.
All right, we're back together, and it's time for test drive number... I don't even know. Test drive number something. All right, been driving around for about 10 minutes, and I think I'm in the clear. Suspension feels nice and tight. I still have to do that steering and toe adjustment, but I am uh, I'm pretty pleased with myself. 